guys and welcome to RC Cincy. Wow, this is something I've been waiting for for probably seven or eight years since I originally saw uh, videos about this particular excavator, not this one, but hydraulic excavators in general. So I know there's some that are very, very expensive and there's some entry level ones like this one. So I set a goal to get one. Uh, sure enough, the chan I started the channel about four years ago. I hit 10,000 subscribers. It does okay. It's not a lot of money. Honestly, the amount of stuff I buy to review and everything probably is more than what I make on the channel and the small ads that I do do. Um, and, you know, I'm still working on working with companies and trying to figure out ways to get products to review, uh, get discounts and deals for you guys and stuff like that. So I'm still working on that. But I've been looking for one for a while now. I've been pretty patient about it, trying to find the best deal. So uh, this particular Kobo light here is the uh, Kobo light 336 GC. Um, and the original retail price was $1,999. Obviously manufacturers have a little wiggle room. They can give you different discounts and different deals and such, uh, depending on quantities they buy and uh, people they know. So. It's been all over the place. For an example, uh, this machine right here on Amazon right now, a top race version, which is basically a distributor. Same thing, just a little bit different stickers. Uh, and I think the remote, instead of being white, it's black. That one is $1,799 plus tax, free shipping. It takes, uh, I think, a week, week and a half or so. Uh, they had another distributor on there that was $1,800. Uh, I Googled it a while back. It was anywhere from $15 some change all the way up to 2000 and I even saw one for 2100 which I didn't understand. But I guess, you know, supply and demand, uh, which sucks kind of, but um, shortages, of course. And I was looking for one on Black Friday. I thought, man, it would be amazing if someone offered a deal on Black Friday. I don't know if these coupons are still good. I will try it out, um, the coupon that I used on this. So I purchased this. I'll give you more information on the website towards the end. It's from uh, enginediy.com. And I'll give you the coupon that I used. Hopefully it works. I don't know if it was just for Black Friday or if it was just the remainder of this year. Uh, the coupon was 2021. And it saved me, I think, somewhere like 15% of, you know, for, I think it was on sale for $1,450. With the coupon, brought it down to $1,250. And seventy-six dollars and eighty-eight cents. That's including a fifty-one dollar uh, shipping protection plan. I didn't want it to get crushed or damaged in shipping, and then have to, you know, try to get the distributor to work with you to get parts or fix it, or they may be like, "Hey, you didn't get the shipping uh, insurance." So I got it. I think for fifty dollars, if you're gonna get anything, uh, get that. And it, um, my experience, I'll give you guys my experience with this company, uh, really quickly. Uh, so engine DYI, uh, they have really cool four cylinders and a bunch of other stuff They have RC dump trucks, obviously excavators. They have all kinds of really cool, uh, metal, you know, working engines, just everything engines. You can actually put in RC cars. They do have YouTube videos. They're on uh, Facebook, they're on Instagram, they're all over the place. It's legit. Um, and honestly, uh, I was really impressed because of the fact that I ordered it on Black Friday, which was what, the 27th, 26th, something like that. Ordered it then, um, or 28th, I can't remember, 29th, I can't remember, whatever Black Friday date was. Uh, I'm having a brain fart, it's been a long day at work. Um, ordered it then, they sent me a message saying, thank you for your order. Then they sent me a message saying, hey, uh, we should have it shipped out by December 5th, hopefully sooner. Sure enough, they shipped it out on December 2nd, and you will not believe how fast they got here. Now, mind you, I did the free shipping. There was an optional DHL upgrade. Um, I don't know if they just, because it was late, or if they just, <laughs> kindness of their heart, or I don't know what it was, or they may ship it that way to begin with, I don't know. Uh, they ship it through DHL, 
They shipped it on the 2nd and I got it on the 6th. That's four days from um, Hong Kong, China, SAR province or whatever you say that. Uh, that is just absolutely incredible. So I had to mention that. Uh, I am going to leave a link for the website because that was the cheapest price that I found. AliExpress, I think, had it for 1100 I got this for 12 something but I think there was shipping to be added. So I think it would be around this price or 14, I think, or maybe more. I'll look into that. Obviously, prices may vary and change since I purchased it. They may not have the Black Friday sale no more. You know, it may be just 14 50 which is still a good price, um, especially if they get to you that fast. That's a really good price. And then for 1276 it's just an absolute steal, in my opinion, considering Amazon selling it for 17 to 1800 Most of the websites are selling at 15 plus. So that's just something to keep in mind. Obviously, miles may vary, area, uh, deals, just everything. But I will leave a description. I will leave a link to the website. Try the coupon, see if it works. I will try it as well, and maybe comment later, like, hey, if it works or not, after I publish this video. Uh, so I just wanted to let let you guys know they were very prompt on responding to me. Uh, they shipped it. Um, they got it to me fast. And uh, DHL, I think, is one of the better uh, shippers, in my opinion. You can see the little yellow stick right here. It is DHL. The condition of it is not bad at all. This is a very, very thick cardboard. So you can see it's not really crushed anywhere. It's got a small little thing right here. I don't think that did anything. Uh, not bad shape at all. So that's what the box looks like. I did mark all that out, my information. So this is what the box looks like itself. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. But I just thought I'd let you guys know where I purchased it from and everything like that. I'll have all that other information and we'll talk more a little bit towards the end about, uh, about some other things too. So this officially is the most expensive item I've had on my channel. Uh, I think prior to this was like 600 something dollars. I think I had a, uh, well, I forget what it was, but I think 650 with tax was the most expensive thing I had on my channel. This is $1,276. So this definitely takes the cake. I feel like I've been very patient about this. And I'm gonna share my unboxing experience. There's gonna to be tons of videos on this, but this is just gonna be unboxing on this one. So, uh, let's go ahead and cut this. I won't cut too, too, too deep. Boom, boom. So on the outside of it, it says quantity one piece, 11.3 uh, uh, I think it says like 11 uh, kilograms. I think it's like 20 something pounds. Can't remember exactly. It's close to 30 pounds, 20 something pounds. I think uh, maybe with the battery, it's 30 pounds. I can't remember. We'll kind of look up those details. Maybe it has them. So we got a little cardboard insert. We'll just throw that to the side. And we do got that little case. Cool. Whoa. It does have some weight. You may need to turn a little bit on the side to kind of work this out. Come on, baby. Oh, this is so heavy. <laughs> there we go. We'll set the box to the side. So, so let you know, this box is extremely thick. Look how thick that is. Very, very solid, thick box. So it looks like it did a really great job of protecting it. Look at that. There's like no smashed, dinged, nothing. Sweet. So uh, you have these latches. I have seen, obviously, you've, I'm sure some of you guys have seen the videos, but I do uh, how to open this and everything. So we have the latches right here. Pull down and see what side it is. Yep, we'll do this side first. Wow, that looks good. So, oh wow, that's different. So right off the bat, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, the K336 hydraulic excavator operating instructions, Kobo light. Uh, just shows you the controls, the excavator, the cab. Uh, talks about probably charging the battery up with the included charger. Talks about putting batteries in the controller. Uh, if you want to bind it to a different transmitter or, uh, you have another one you want to use, 
Talks about that. It talks about the oil level. So it looks like hydraulic 46, number 46 hydraulic fluid is what you want to put in there. I am going to purchase some. Um, I don't know if they come depending on customs and the area. Some of them ship with hydraulic fluid. Some of them ship with hydraulic fluid in it. Some of them uh, ship with no hydraulic fluid in them. So hopefully it has fluid in it. I'm hoping. Uh, talks about the light, the, what button does what. So that's kind of nice. It gives you like a pretty well detailed uh, instructions on everything. So that is the instruction manual. Set that right here. Hopefully it's still in the shot. Yeah, we'll slide it over just a hair. Uh, that's the instruction manual. And then what else we got here? What is this? Oh, looks like the mirrors. So we are going to need these. Are these mirrors? No, they're supposed to be shaped out. So these are the little mirrors. We'll set that to the side. Uh, we'll go ahead and pull this out real quick. So this is obviously how you would add the hydraulic fluid. Oh, it's empty. <laughs> so uh, hopefully it has some in the machine, right? Uh, I think they would fill it. I'm surprised I don't give you extra. But that's cool, though, because that's easy to get. It's not a big deal to get it where I live. Uh, hydraulic fluid. What else we got here? Oh, yeah, that's the charger. So you get a little plug, US plug. Hopefully, oh, yeah, there is the bind plug right there. Throw this to the side. Here is the bind plug. And then let's see what kind of charger we get here. Uh, B3, 20 watt charger, compact charger. Uh, output at current is 1.6 amps. Wow, this is gonna take a while to charge a 10,000 milliamp battery. Uh, I'll show you what I probably would recommend. Cause uh, I mean, this will work, this will charge it. Your first time is gonna be the fastest cause it has uh, a decent charge on there, like a storage charge on the battery. So your first charge is gonna be the probably the shortest and then after you run it down, obviously, you're probably going to be waiting a while. Uh, at 1.6 amps on a 10,000 milliamp battery, that's what it does per hour. So you're looking at, I'd say at least a four and a half to five hour charge, which is fine, maybe a little less, uh, which is fine, you know, if you don't run it all the time and you just want to quickly charge it or whatever. Uh, I would honestly use a hobby grade charger, but this will work just fine. I don't see it being an issue working and then you can use it for other ones. And the sweet part is, you have two cell and three cell. So that's cool that it will do a uh, higher uh, capacity uh, battery. So what is this? Oh, that's cool. Huh. EngineDYI.com. So that is the website. That's what their logo will look like right there. EngineDYI. E-N-G-I-N-E. DYI, you can see the little motor right there. That's really cool. This is a bottle opener. Oh, it's got a QR code. Service at enginedy.com. So I guess there's a QR code. Let's see if it, well, my phone's on there. I'll see if that works. Um, but that's a cool little bottle opener. I don't know if you get this from everyone you purchase from them or what. That's interesting. And then last on this side is the controller. So this is the uh, Fly Sky. Uh, I think it is a um, 10 channel radio. I think it says, yeah, it's a, it's a 10 channel radio. It has 10 channels. So you have, here, this is how you figure that out. So you put these off to the side. So you have one channel up and down, two, three, and four. So that's four channels right here. These two is four channels. And you have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 channels, plus you have two buttons as well that you can get them to do something. But this is a 10 channel radio. Looks like I'm gonna need four AAA batteries. Uh, and then it, it is supposedly uh, touch screen, uh, nice grips. I do got a really nice cool keychain I got from working somewhere that I'm gonna use. It's got a nice little handle. So let's set that to the side. We don't want that to fall off. Uh, and then let's go ahead and shut this. Make sure you shut all the way. And then it'll snap. Uh, the handle should be strong enough to pick it up and everything. So let's go ahead and unsnap this side, the main event. Ah, there we go. Oh, man, that looks good. So 
So one thing I thought about is I don't want to scratch this really nice wooden table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out and probably just set it on the phone. Or maybe I can get like a garbage bag or something and set it there. So let's go ahead and pull this beast out. It is it's got a little bit of weight to it. Just be careful. You don't want to bend or break anything. Just kind of slowly slide it out without forcing it, you know. So let's, come on. There we go. So let's slide this back. And then I'm going to put a bag or something. I just don't want to scratch the wood. And that would be better, but at least, hopefully, I don't plan on like twisting and turning on it. So I think this will be okay. Um, so let's go ahead and pick this up. And set it right here. And let's go ahead and kind of have that as a background. That's fine. So let's make sure the excavator's got a good shot on it. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Not too, too much, but just get a little bit. So there it is, guys. There is the excavator. So it's got little mirrors right here. So you got this one, which makes sense for your side. And then you got this one right here, which would be about right there. You got that one. And then the one uh, mirror that was right here, I do believe goes right here in this little notch. Let's see if it snaps in. Oh, yeah. Oh, it goes this way. There we go. So this will allow the driver to see in these other directions. You got, looks like, is that a windshield wiper? <laughs> That's a windshield wiper. So I'm gonna have to grab this to show some details. I'm gonna have to grab it off the stand. I will put it back on here. But I feel like you're just not gonna get good shots. So let me step, let me turn the light this way. Okay, so let's start. From, let's start with the cab. So the cab looks really good. One thing I noticed is this top window right here is tinted. That's really cool touch. You have this mirror and you can turn it so you can place it how you like, right? Looks like this windshield wiper moves. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it to this side or would it be? Eh, this side would be more out of the way, right? Uh, then you have the door. The only thing that's a bummer is I wish they had a door that opens. I know on the uh, Bigger Brother, the 970, it does open. And the 9, the uh, 350, the K350 opens. The K970 opens. They have a couple other versions that do open. Just this one does not. And the other versions also have uh, panels that open on the side as well. This one does not, unfortunately, right? So inside the cab, you can see you do got the yellow, you got the, this color seat. It's supposed to be like a gray cloth, I guess. Uh, you can upgrade these cabs to where you can actually cut the door. Uh, you can actually cut the door. You can put a guy in there. You can actually open it, like the screws, take this off. And there's a couple of screws on this backside. And then there's tabs in the front or maybe a screw, no, tabs in the front and remove this cab and actually put a guy in there, have him hold the controls and then put the cab back on. So you don't have to cut this door out to have a guy in there, right? You can open this up and put a guy in there if you would like, right? That's really cool. Um, you can see the drives going forward. You can see some stickers and details for the uh, control panel. That's really, really nice. You can see the little marks, the little lines where the vents would be to cool the cab. Uh, you can see the matte pattern on the floor, uh, cobalt light, little sticker right there. Uh, that's really detailed. Like that's respectable for an entry level. You got to think this is entry level. There's machines out there. This is estimated retail at 2000. Then they have like a five or $6,000 version. Then they have like a 10, $12,000 version. So you got quite a few variants, right? Um, and then the back of it is all metal. This. Metal. That's magnet metal. Uh, these rails are metal. Right? Uh, this one right here is plastic. Uh, you can see where you clean your feet off and have grip to climb up. There you can see a little detailing there. See a bunch of little details where they painted like the actual door handle. Not the door, but the handles on the back. Let's come around this bad boy. Here is the back of it. Has these little reflectors here. 
The exhaust is metal as well. That's a nice touch. A couple other little details on the back side. We're gonna spin this around, obviously. Uh, uh, we'll just kind of look at one side at a time. And then the boom itself, you can see the hydraulic lines ran from back there right up here obviously the wiring as well for the lights and there are lights actually in the cab right here and right here there should be lights in the cab that's a really really nice touch um and then i love uh they have all this little detail like this and like holding the lines up here as well and then the actual um Cylinders themselves look really really detailed. Look at that. That looks really good with the little fittings That looks really good with the actual lines and the clamps to hold the lines in place. Love that touch You can see the lights LED of course uh, There is lights on both sides of it. I'll show you the other side as well. Uh, you can see the little wires running to it um, These right here are nice touches these fasteners that hold the pins in those are really, really nice touches. Same up here. That looks really good for the cylinders as well. That is a very high quality touch right there. Obviously, it's not like a German or Italian made, you know, fifteen, ten thousand dollar one, but it is good for an entry level, definitely. You get a little sticker right here, which is a nice little detail. Some looks looks like some bolts or rivets right there. Same thing here. You always get little touches here and there lines it just looks really really good um what else uh, you can see this cylinder right here you can see that these have these little allen wrench little bolts that hold them on this does not have a quick detach detach i don't know if you can add one i don't know what all it's capable of adding or hydraulic lines or um you know anything else to it i'm not 100 percent sure uh, on that to be honest with you i'm sure you could run uh, i don't know if the block only how many uh cylinders the block can handle if it can only handle three if it has another one for four I, I i think it only has three uh valves and three little servos i do believe uh i think this one's just a brushless motor right here honestly i do believe uh which we'll kind of check on that here in a second so the bucket is very very large here is my fist next to the bucket so that is a much much larger bucket than the 580 just for a comparison uh i will have a full comparison later just not right now we want to focus on this uh the tracks are much more detailed than the 580 tracks you see they're much larger very very detailed way bigger tr bigger tracks you can see the little step details right here absolutely love you can see the rollers the main drive wheel right there um man that is good looking let's just spin this around i don't think it's gonna hurt anything spinning it around i'll slid off there that's what that noise was uh okay so here's this side same thing get another little sticker there more detail which i love i love these stickers i'm gonna leave the cobalt light i'm not gonna switch it to cat or anything that looks legit to me um, then you have your mirror from the side to make sure no one's on the side of your excavator. You have another one to look behind you, which it technically this one is in the wrong place. I could tell you that right now. I don't know why this one would be here. So to me, if you're looking over, you would want something like this. Oh, it's too angled right there. Huh? Maybe it goes here. I don't know. Uh, we can adjust that and figure that out later. So this one would be. Where does it go on this other one? I don't know. So that one would be right here to see, I guess, on the side of you. And then this to look down on the side of you so you don't run nothing over. So we'll figure that out. You get more detail, little fuel cap. Another fuel cap here with a little sticker showing fuel. Technically, this is where the hydraulic fluid goes. You see another one of these fasteners that holds the pin in I like that detail and it looks like the spinning section isn't isn't cheap little plastic not cheap but little small motor it looks like it has a heavy duty uh looks like a heavy duty brushless motor 
I mean, look at that. Look at all those little bolts holding it on. Like that's, yeah, that's beefy. <laughs> that's beefy right there. This should have plenty of power spinning. Um, as far as the underneath goes, there's nothing spectacular. Oh, wow, that's all metal under there. Look at that. Wow, that is beautiful. Never mind. Look at that. That's all metal. It can spin continuously. You don't have to worry about anything. I'm just feeling the tension on the track. So there is a thing that pushes out that keeps tension on there. Tension on the tracks. Um, you can see the little bearing right, the little sleeve holding the piston. There's the piston. There's the hydraulic lines. Clamps holding it for detailing. Man, that is beautiful. Obviously, the other light on this side. The teeth. It's got really nice detailed teeth. You can see all the little details on the bucket. It is just a really good looking machine, to be honest with you. For entry level, this is really, really good. Uh, underneath here, more detailing. Did they get it left at this point? Like, there's like panels and little fake vents and stuff like that. Cool. So it shows that they really wanted to give me as much detail as possible. Under this is where we have obviously the off and on switch and the battery. So let's go ahead and pull this out. Just out of curiosity, I just want to look in there. So looks like this is an XT30 connector. And it says DC 7.4 volts. So I don't think you can run 3S on this. I don't think it can handle it. It's not made for it. Uh, could you upgrade it to run on 3S? Probably, but then you have to upgrade the ESC that controls uh, this motor, the ESC that controls uh, the pump motor. Uh, you need something that controls the voltage to the servos that control on the hydraulics. So you're gonna have to, you know, uh, have something to manage that power and have the right amount depending on what products you have. Obviously you get more higher performance servos that can handle higher current, but whatever the ESC is, it, you know, it breaks that all down. So, or BC or whatever. Um, I'm just not 100% sure on the hydraulic on this complete setup. Uh, I haven't taken this apart. I am gonna remove the back to make sure I don't have any leaks. Uh, that's something I recommend, which I'll get further into in another video. So, um, cause there's quite a bit of electronics here. And that is magnetic, by the way. You can see how it's pulling itself. See how it gets, kind of pulls itself. So when you're running it, it's not going to shake or open or pop open on you. So that's a nice touch. Really heavy, thick metal. You can hear that when it closes. I like that. So the battery is uh, just has this Cobalite sticker. This is 10,000 milliamps, 7.4 volts. 10,000 is a very large battery. What I like about this, and all batteries should have, especially ones that are in weird places, is people like to pull on these wires and they come off. This is smart right here. See this tab? You pull this tab, you pull the battery up, and it keeps you from ripping and damaging the balance lead. Sorry, boo, it was me. It was daddy. It's okay. And then obviously XT30. Uh, you can use other batteries. You're gonna need adapters. It's a weird, it would be a shorty. And to have a 10,000 shorty like this, Kind of a unique battery. Uh, these go anywhere from $79 to $99. So just, uh, I'm gonna probably pick it up another one. Just to have another one would be nice. Uh, supposedly these give you really good run times. Uh, not 100% sure on the exact time, which we will figure out obviously. So that's the battery. Um, and I think that covers the unboxing. I just wanted to get some uh, initial thoughts. I am gonna probably turn it on, make sure it works. Uh, honestly, I don't know if it works or if it's a good unit or if it's just going to start leaking. I don't know. Uh, but I really, really recommend watching some teardown videos, figuring out how to remove just this lid. You don't have to tear down the whole excavator. If you take this lid off, it's not going to hurt anything. If you're careful, I promise you, it's not going to hurt anything. Remove this lid. And what it's going to allow you to see is if you have any leaks by the block coming off of the block, uh, any of the seals are loose or any of the seals are bad or something's loose or whatever. Um, and you also want to run it and let the f 
fluid fill up all the cylinders and move it up completely all the way up, completely all the way down several times, move it all around and then check your hydraulic fluid because they probably felt this, but you want to make sure it's full after it runs, right? So I'm sure they tested it. I'm almost 100% positive they tested it. I can tell you that right now. Um, so that's something to think about. So how I put the battery in here is I actually put the battery in upside down this way. So there's this space right here. See that space for all that? Plug it up and then tuck the wires in here, right? Close it, done. So what I'm gonna do is put the phone back on the stand. We're gonna throw some batteries in the transmitter. We're gonna plug up the excavator and we're gonna do a quick test. It's not gonna be a first dig video. It's just gonna be a quick test to make sure the product that I paid all that money for works, right? It's kind of important. I love that yellow. Just absolutely love the way it looks. So I feel like I want it when, when I'm operating it the other way. So what I'm going to do is lift up. Now with these, uh, one thing to note, these particular excavators, they're set up a little different than a lot of hydraulic. A lot of hydraulic excavators will have a dial on the transmitter and you turn it up or down and that is your pump. So you can literally turn up your pump pressure to increase the bar, which is the PSI in the line. And you can increase it if you want more digging power, if you want to move slower, that's how you do it. Well, this particular excavator is set up to, uh, basically when you hit a stick on how much you hit the stick, that's how fast the pump will spin and give you pressure then. There is cons and pros to this, and we'll get into that in another video once I run it and make sure and that I'm correct on my thoughts on that, right? So, really quickly, if you want a faster way of charging this battery, I would recommend a charger like this. It's been on my channel. This is the CI, uh, this is the uh, HT, uh, HTRC uh, charger. This is available on Amazon. I think it's $56.99, at least when I got it. I don't know what times now how much I've dropped this. I don't know how many times I've scratched that banged up. I've been really rough with it. I accidentally drop it and leaving it places and it still works flawlessly. Um, I did a full review on it, how it can run off of DC. It can run off of, I mean, DC it can run off of AC. It's got cooling. Uh, it's just got a lot of really nice features. What I love about it, it's 150 Watts and it can push up to 10 amps. So the cool part is if you plug this up, obviously, and the balance lead and you are going to need an adapter because this is xt30 not xt60 you are going to need an adapter however or if you have an adapter that goes xt60 xt30 however you like and then obviously connect the balance lead in the in the 2s lead and plug this up obviously uh you can charge at 7.4 obviously the 7.4 volts but you can charge at 10 amps so you can charge in one hour you can charge this 10,000 milliamp battery, no problem, in about an hour. That's completely depleted, it'll be an hour. So it'll probably be about a 45, probably a 45 to 50-ish, maybe a little less, depending on how much you deplete the battery. I wouldn't completely drain it. Hopefully it has a bar on the transmitter or some kind of indication on the battery level. I wouldn't run it completely down. Those batteries are expensive, I wouldn't do that. So this will charge it much faster because this will do 10 amps, this one only does 1.6. So do the math. This is gonna take longer. I'm not saying this doesn't work. There's, it's nice that they included it. It is a good charger for its purpose. 20 watts, 150 watts, right? So these are typically, I don't know, like 10, 15 bucks, 20 bucks or something like that. I would just spend literally $56 on this. It comes with this, not obviously the adapter. It comes with the balance and the, the wire, and it comes with the wire that plugs into that can connect to a battery an actual like car battery and you can also obviously plug in a large capacitor battery charge smaller batteries and then you can obviously buy different plugs like this i have a ec uh ec5 for it as well so yeah that's just something to keep in mind it's just nice to have that i figure i'll throw that in unboxing obviously it doesn't come with it but i just recommend it and it just makes sense to me to not wait forever to charge a battery right and then uh, we're gonna get our four AA batteries. I like, I know it seems like I'm selling stuff, but like optimum batteries are the best batteries. 
um, in my opinion, period. Um, I use them on my uh, DX8E because when you're flying, it's very important to have really good batteries. So I use it on that. I know a lot of folks use rechargeable packs. I just like batteries because I can just throw them away when they're done, not worry about having to charge it or it going bad. You just run them when they're dead, you throw them away. I did actually get a battery tester finally because I have like so many batteries in different products. I don't know if they're good or not and I don't want to put them in a new product and then take away from its performance, especially if it relies on the batteries for its performance. So that's just something to keep in mind. These will actually read uh, if you have four of these, it should read 6.0. Oh, it actually reads like 6.6, six, 6.7. Six, six, so they're very powerful AA batteries. So this is the transmitter. So what we're going to do now is we're going to plug up the battery. So we're just going to match it up. It only goes in one way. You can get it to touch the other way and spark, so you don't want to cook anything. Plug it in all the way. Tuck it in there. You see everything fits really, really nicely. What is that? Oh, that's a screw that holds on the door. Okay, the hinge itself. That's how you remove the hinge. Remove this screw, and then this one will probably pop out once this one's removed. Uh, you can see the magnet right there. You can see the screw that it attracted to. There is the off and on button. So I think you're supposed to, before I do that, let me grab a paper towel and make sure there's hydraulic fluid in it. I don't want to burn my pump up. But can you burn a pump up? I know on heavy equipment, when you're low on hydraulic fluid, you can burn a pump up and it doesn't work at all. Uh, and you can damage the pump. I don't know if it's the same scenario with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to, it's this black cap right here. I love it because it looks scale detailed. So we're going to just unscrew this. It is really long thread, so don't worry. It's going to come out. And you don't want to drip all over your RC, so have a towel. And you basically want to look in the light. There's a notch right here. And you want to be in that notch. So it is, looks like it is completely full. That's a good sign. Let's put that back in. Let's tighten that up. Take your towel, touch around, make sure there's no oil on the sides or anything. You don't want to get oil on your machine. Do not panic if your machine comes in the mail and there's a little bit of oil here or there. When they fill it, they can spill some, okay? Doesn't mean the machine has a leak. You can check for that. Doesn't mean it has a leak, right? I don't know, I'm real like weird about stuff being... <laughs> there, I'm real weird about stuff. So, there's that. So what we're gonna do is... There we go. You'll hear the double beep. That's on. Then to turn on this transmitter, before you turn it on, make sure this switch, this switch, this switch, and that switch are up. Then you're gonna press both of these at the same time. Let it go. See the little chime? So here is the transmitter. Here is your uh, receiver battery and your transmitter battery. You can see both of them are full. Um, then you have your engine mode off. Uh, that's probably if you, you can also set up a sound box with this because it has so many switches. You can set up a sound box. You can set up the little yellow spinny light. You can do tons of stuff. That'll be later on. Uh, so to be able to run the machine, you have to press and hold and let go. When that sign is like that, that means the machine is unlocked. Now you have full hydraulics. So what we'll do is I'll kind of try to keep the transmitter kind of in the shot. Let's back out just a little bit, right? And then we'll try to keep the transmitter. So we have up. That's up. Now you can go lower see that or you can rip it that's what i like about it. and you can i think you can do expo and like adjust it and stuff in the controller if you know what you're doing with these controllers you can do a lot of adjustments i absolutely love that then you have so this is your main arm that's down that's up i'm probably going to reverse that because i would be pulling in as i'm digging no that's perfect that's the right way then this should Roll the bucket, so slow and faster. So that's nice, it wasn't all the way full speed, by the way. Um, and then this should be uh, the arm, the, for, the, the, the shorter arm or whatever. So that's forward out. And then let's go fast out. See that? So you can adjust the speed. And then this should be your spinning. 
So that is a brushed, brushless motor in there. And it's got quite a bit of power. Let me see if it clicks. Oh no, it's, it's a monster. A lot of those cheaper ones will go click, 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 and it'll barely spin. This will have some force. Um, so that is that control. Then you have, let's face us so I can show you this. You can see the little lights on the cab, like I mentioned. One, two little LEDs there. Then you obviously have your LEDs right here. These are actually relatively bright, but I have a really bright light shining at them. Um, hold on. Let's do one of these. They're really bright. I was surprised how bright they are. Just looking at them, I can tell. Let's see. Oh yeah, those are pretty bright. Uh, I don't know if they're quite bright enough to dig, uh, but they're, you can definitely notice in the daylight. And you can definitely notice when it's dusk, it may work for you well. Uh, you can also upgrade those or add more, obviously. Do quite a bit with these. Then you have your, uh, let's see, so let's go back this way. Then you have this switch. Oh, sorry, I didn't actually switch the lights off and on. This switch is your lights. This, this does nothing. This does nothing. This does nothing. So they're just not set yet. You can have your yellow lights. You can have your maybe speeds or rates, how fast it moves. I don't know. You can, you have quite a bit of options there. And this is touchscreen. Swipe to the left. This will show you. Man, this light is kind of uh, not working. So bueno, hold on. Let me turn this down. Nope. I have to turn this off when I show you this. Hopefully it'll be bright enough to see it. Oh yeah, there we go. While I show you this. So it's touchscreen. So that is your main screen. You press and hold to unlock it. Swipe over. If you want to see what channel is doing what. So you'll know when I hit that, that is channel five. When I hit this, that's channel three. I'm hitting channel five as well. So you can see what channel is using what that's really really cool feature right so if you need to reverse something figure out what channel it is you know what channel to reverse that's how you would figure that out then you can go this way this way is going to be your transmitter voltage oh that's really neat i never seen it what is this i don't know value there is the value so Internal voltage. I don't know. Is there something else? Can we scroll up or down? Not 100% sure on that. Uh, not 100% sure on that. There's other values of voltages. So uh, that's cool. I guess that signal strength is a 10. So let's go back this way. Yeah, that's signal strength. And then obviously the transmitter and then the internal voltage of the... Um, excavator that seems kind of low i don't know how accurate it is we'll look into that i'm not 100 percent sure on that to be honest with you um and then the moat engine off and then obviously you can go into settings like you can reverse you can do endpoints trims rates rate and expo that's really nice you can put it on a switch you go in and change your channels you can go in and set switches for whatever you want it to be you have fail safe you have mixing if you want mixing in this excavator. I think that is beautiful, right? So let's turn this light back on. I think that's just absolutely incredible. Sorry, this moved a little bit. Let me tilt this back a little bit so the whole excavator is a shot. There we go. So uh, I recommend using a lanyard so you don't drop this transmitter. It isn't the most expensive transmitter, but it's nice. There are other ones. Let's see if these ones are really Nothing. And then finally, these rollers. This is how you drive it. You have one side, which is your right side. So you go this way. See that track? So this one should be forward. That should be back. Forward, back, forward, back. Yep. So forward and then back. Forward. So you can do one side, turn. Or you can do opposites to turn faster, like this. Oh. See how much faster I can turn? 
or you can do one side or both, obviously forward, backward. That's not slow. It's squeaking like metal tracks would on a real excavator. Listen, let me go forward, hold on. Do you hear that? <laughs> That's what metal tracks sound like on a real excavator. I am blown away. So there are, I don't know, right in here, there is motors with gearing. I don't know if this version has brushed. Now let me tell you, a lot of these, will go with brushed. And why that is, you ask, is even the 580, which is metal tracks as well, if you get a rock in there and you hit the power of the brushed motor, it will literally strip the little gearing in there. So that tells me that any amount of power, those gears are not that strong. And especially a brushless motor would destroy those gears. It would be... It would be faster, but I think you would damage and wear those gears out a lot faster than brushed will. I do believe these are brushed motors for the drive, and I do believe the spinning top end is a brushless motor is what it sounds like to me. You can hear that, that little high-pitched squeal or noise. You can tell it's brushless. This is definitely brushed. You can hear that's brushed. That's brushless. That's full speed. And I wonder if you can adjust that in the ESC or in the trim or whatever. So it really has a lot of adjustability. Seems like it's butter smooth. So what I was talking about earlier, now you see that? That's got me thinking, see it moving a little bit? That's got me thinking that it has a leak, right? Like, that arm, so it depends on the point. Now, mind you, this is all metal. That's metal, that's metal, that's metal, that's metal, that's metal, that's metal. That's a lot of weight. I don't know if the servo in here that opens the valve and closes is shutting it all the way. It may need some trim. Or if the fluid is low in that particular piston, that need to work it more. Or I have a leak. Don't know, right? It could be in here and I can't see it. Uh, not 100% sure on that. Let's see if anything else does it. This is gonna be an honest review. I'm not, uh, see at that point right there, it wants to go. Once I get it this high, it does not. Once I get it this high, it'll go. So that's just so much weight beyond a certain point, that pivot point right there, it just can't handle. Let's see the rest now. That's all the way up, not moving. Let's go ahead and do the bucket. Not moving. Bucket this way. Not moving. Arm this way. Nothing there. Let's try about midway, about right here. Not moving. So I don't know if this needs some trim to where that valve maybe is still a little bit open. The servo's not pushed all the way up. I'll look into that. That could be just a minor adjustment. I'm hoping it's an adjustment, not a leak, right? Or a bad valve or something else like that. I don't know too much about this, but to me, it would be trim, it would be sub trim, right? Like servo trim, the servos back here. So I'll look into that. But when I'm digging, that's not gonna be an issue because I'm digging, I'm controlling it. See at that point right there is its weakest point right here. But once I give it hydraulic fluid, it goes. Whoops. <laughs> Let's hang it over. Let's bring it closer this way. And I'm going to move the arm up and down. And I'm going to try to work some. I'm thinking maybe just the hydraulic fluid needs to be worked in that. So I'm going to go all the way down. Look at that. That is amazing range, by the way. The 580, not even remotely close. You can dig extremely, extremely deep. It's actually still bottoming him out. I'm still hitting it. Let me get a little closer. There we go. Just, what's it hitting? Wow, the lines are actually hitting down there. <laughs> so 
So it could be it didn't fill up the hydraulic. It didn't get... I wonder... I don't know if you're supposed to have that type. Or if you can have... Uh, air in the hydraulic line. I don't know if that can happen. Or if you got to crack this a little bit and let out some air. I don't know much about these, right? Like, I'm going to be figuring this out with you guys. But what I'm doing right now... Is trying to basically... Not doing it anymore. I knew it. I feel like this one is shorter. This one's longer and this one's shorter. I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. Let me see. Nah. I don't hurt nothing. So let's do the same thing for the bucket piston. Ooh. Gotta <laughs> watch that. Okay, I'm digging, so I'm going in, rolling the bucket, scooping. Wow, that's got some fast speed. I may do a little, make it a little, you know, a little slower. Well, you can go, like, you can be, like, really, like, uh, Man, I love how much... Oh, I gotta watch that. I love how much... Or you can go like this. Slow, see that? So you can go slow, you just gotta be, some expo and some a little bit of adjustment, this thing will be butter smooth, right? It's all about adjusting it. There needs to be a video on adjusting, I feel like. I've not ever seen that. And I may have to work on that. Okay? Now let's test, the arm is all the way out, that is the heaviest point. Let's test my theory. So let's pump a little. Make sure it's got fluid. So that's all the way up. About right. See? It's like the valve, it's like the servo isn't pushed up all the way and it's like bleeding off. I'm not saying it's leaking, but. Will I do it there? Nope. Does it right there though. See it? And that is extremely. Like, that is so much weight right there, it's not even funny. So I don't know if everyone else has experience. I'm not saying it's a bad product. It could be something very silly, adjustment. I am gonna run it some more, because it seemed like it got better the more I ran it, honestly. And I am gonna put this to the ring. I don't think I'm gonna baby this thing and it's gonna be some little display model. This is gonna be intended to show you guys how how well it holds up, if it's worth your hard-earned money, and how good of an entry-level excavator it is, period, right? a leak or not right leaks are common with these but that's what I want to figure out because when it's up all the way and this is filled up all the way seems like it doesn't want to move but right there is the only spot in the whole system right there I may trim it to where the valves pushed in all the, I don't know how that works but Man, that just blows me away. The full range. That just blew me away, honestly. And when you're doing multiple uh, controls, it feels like it still has power. Yeah, <laughs> that's, it moved my head like it was nothing. Yeah, it's got quite a bit of power. So honestly, guys, which way it's forward? That's 
back, that's four. So I have it turned the right way. I think this drive wheel is supposed to actually be in the front, I do believe. Uh, so guys, I know this video was long. It is intended to be long. So I wanted to be very, very uh, thorough in the unboxing and the initial thoughts on this. Uh, this is not gonna be the first dig video. We're gonna do that, obviously. Uh, I wanna do some, uh, I wanna do a full proper setup and trim video, which will take time to do because I wanna be very specific and figure out everything about it before I do that video. Not just watching videos, but actually doing it myself. And then uh, I am gonna do some mod videos where I think I may add a light, I may add a sound box, other things as well. Let me know if you guys are interested in other things you want me to try out for it, I will do it. And uh, in the future, I may do some upgrades to this as well, right? And I'm always looking to see if I see any hydraulic. As the first indication, uh, everywhere on these fittings, it's dry. So just you can't see anything in here. I'm really curious. Uh, is there any holes here that it would leak? If there was any fluid, right? Wouldn't there be? Um, just check it. Look everywhere. Check it. Don't be afraid. I think there's only one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's like six to eight screws that just removes this lid. Just watch it because there's going to be a power button. You can unplug that. Don't pull that wire. That should be the only thing. That and obviously the uh, power, uh, the power button and the plug button that has ran through this uh, particular lid. Just watch those two. Set it to the side or unplug them. Whatever is best. Just be careful because a lot of these little boards or circuits, wherever it's plugged into, Actually, something like this would have a receiver and the ESC would be plugged into the receiver. Uh, the servos off the hydraulic pumps would be plugged into the receiver. The ESCs would go into the receiver. So everything will run into the receiver um, and obviously power going to the receiver. Um, I don't know if it had, I'm, I would imagine it may have a BC. I don't know. Uh, I, I really want to open one up and look in there and I'm going to. Just not in this video. I want to do the first dig video, uh, first dig and performance kind of video and a couple construction videos out of the box experience. I'm not even going to trim or mess with anything. Then that's when we'll do the full trim setup video and then we'll do maybe some modification video and then upgrade will be last. So that's the whole plan for this. Uh, I know this video is long, but I wanted to share everything I could think of at the time of this unboxing and uh, just initial movement and test run. Uh, see if it leaks. It's just that one sweet spot. Now it's not doing it, see? It doesn't even wanna move. So that's really, really weird. Um, that's how much it moves side to side. Not moving any way this way. A little bit of play there. What is that, inactivity? Let's see. Yep, inactivity. So this have an inactivity sensor or whatever in here that after you set down the remote, just in case if you forget, it'll slowly start to beep like that. It may get louder over time, I don't know. A lot of them are cool like that. I know my um, my uh, DXM has stuff like that when you leave it inactive. So it has some really cool connectors at the bottom of this. Uh, this looks like an old PlayStation SP connector or whatever, the spiff connector or whatever it is. Oh, it has that sound. But, uh, I forget that connector. This is probably a buddy box connector, if I had to guess. This is a buddy box connector or some kind of PC connector if you want to use this for like a PC simulator or hydraulic simulator or whatever. And then it looks like you have a micro USB, which will probably can go in here and program or maybe move some model. It may have memory in here. I don't see a memory card. That would have been nice, but I'm sure it has memory for more than one uh, uh, vehicle so that's cool you can probably get a vehicle you probably, they probably these transmitters aren't that expensive they probably every time you buy like a loader or excavator or whatever they come with it um there are upgraded far fly, fly sky uh controllers is this where you would screw in like something else like a holder for like fpv or to hold a camera or whatever that's cool um what else um so i think that covers everything now uh, I was going to say there are upgraded controllers for it. It's kind of like the X20 or X18 or something like that. It has like the little fancy screen and it's black. 
and it's just much bigger, much more controls on it. Supposed to be better gimbals, better setups, brighter screen, color screen. So you do have those upgraded controllers. Then you have like the German ones that are like literally 2,500 for one. And there's some that are like five and a half thousand for a controller. It's crazy. So I know there's crazier excavators and all that, but I think this is a really, so far, in my opinion, uh, there needs to be more done with it. I think this is a good place to start with the hydraulic excavator, especially for $1,276. I saw a 580 converted to hydraulic for that price. And it wasn't as big, it wasn't as beefy, it wasn't as nice, right? So that tells you that this is worth every penny. If you can get this for $1,276, jump on it like I did. So there you have it. Uh, I'm gonna give them a shout out, man. They did extremely great. Uh, engine, www.enginediy.com. Uh, it is a legit website. PayPal, however you wanna pay. No issue whatsoever. Uh, you can tip them. Honestly, if they would have got it to me in four days from China in this condition with no damage, I would have gladly tipped them and I wish I would have for that price as well. Uh, and then you can select obviously DHL, I would, uh, I would recommend it. Um, and I don't know why, they, I guess they gave it to me because there was a couple of days on sending out, usually they send it out within like two to three days and I think it took maybe three or four days to send it out and I think I ordered like on the 28th or 29th and it didn't send out to like the second and that wasn't even that long and he was like, hey, I'm gonna, you know, I guess they upgraded me to Express, you can get the DHL Express. I recommend it. It's only $30. Get it. You will not recommend. And then also, uh, the the protection shipping for $50, you can't beat it. It protects the product. It's damaged. You don't have to fight and argue about it. You get another one sim now or your money back. I forget how it works, but basically it takes care of that. So there you have it, guys. The very first hydraulic excavator on this channel. So excited. Can't wait. Uh, the other videos will not be as long unless it's like a really in-depth tutorial, obviously. Uh, but the first dig, I think, is just going to be some cool tunes and just straight up digging because this is going to be a hoot. I'm just going to relax and have some fun with this. So the next video you're going to see is going to be the dig video. Uh, and then we'll do the full tweaking and setup. Uh, some modifications. And then we'll look into upgrades. So there you have it, guys. First hydraulic excavator. Thank you for watching. Thank you for getting me past 10,000 subscribers. That is incredible. Thank you so much. Don't forget the giveaway ends December 10th for the $50 Amazon gift card. That's just a way of saying thank you to all my new subscribers and old. I appreciate every one of you guys. That's going to do it for this one. See you guys later. Peace.